The following program is sponsored by the Today's Home Remodeler Television Network. Welcome to today's Home Remodeler. I'm Stuart Keith, and on today's show, well, we have an opportunity to see some amazing concrete work. We'll begin with Chris Foss, who explains the process for replacing an existing driveway whose concrete had failed. We'll learn the importance of starting with a good base, selecting the correct mix, and see why having the necessary manpower is critical for the desired end result. We'll also take a tour around town to see how other homeowners are enhancing their curb appeal with color-stamped concrete. So we have a lot to cover today, but we'll get started right after these messages. A concrete driveway can add beauty and elegance to a home but if not properly installed, can fail much sooner than expected. So on today's show, let's begin with Chris Foss, who takes us to one such driveway to explain why it failed and why these homeowners shouldn't have to worry about it failing ever again. Well, Chris, the guys are hard at work making uh, good progress on this new driveway they're putting in. Now, why are the homeowners replacing it? This is getting replaced due to the concrete failed Due to subgrade failure, it had no base underneath it, so over time the water got underneath it, expanded it, cracked it, and the panels in here were all separated apart and starting to fail. Wow, what a nightmare for the homeowners. Uh, now, is that very common, that concrete fails? Um, subgrade failure is a big issue, um, you know, proper base underneath them. Uh, you can't support good concrete if you don't have a good foundation underneath it. You got a good base, you got a good future, and then it starts with proper drainage and water control on the top. Just walking on this, this feels like a good firm base, and is that what you were alluding to, is the original driveway didn't have that? Uh, it was originally filled with sand, so we dug it all out, and it's filled with some three inch rock and topped with three quarter inch gravel and pack. So. Really, so if you're a homeowner out there and you're considering adding some real curb appeal and beauty to your home, a concrete driveway is a great option, but that's something the homeowner should make sure of. It, you know. Concrete, sure, anybody can get concrete, but it's the preparation, the base that goes into it that's gonna create the best end result. It's all those steps that we go through that create the longevity to make it last for the uh, generations that it's supposed to last with minimal uh, maintenance to it. Well, you know, just watching the guys here for the last hour or so, the attention to detail is incredible. I mean, they, they have it down. I go, what are you trying to be within an inch? And they just kind of chuckle and say, yeah, right. More like a 16th of an inch. They want to make sure that it's the right pitch, the right slope, everything is perfect before the concrete even arrives. We only get one time to do this, Stu. When it's hard, you can't change it. Now, why did you drill rebar into the existing floor here? It serves two purposes as a rest pin. And then number two, they won't allow the slab to lift up in the winter like that. And the biggest thing is a lot of modern slabs are falling down around the excavation line of the house. So your first panels around a lot of the garage doors are sinking. And that's because the subgrade underneath them is failing. And number two, they probably don't have some rods in it to hold it up. Well, you know, I've seen that on quite a few homes where that is what happens. And, and they'll have an even slab, an even transition when the house is first built. But over years, it sinks down, and that's because of the backfill. I mean, they just kind of fill it in a new construction, and as that compacts, what you're saying is that just sinks down, and the concrete actually really just cracks, and it's usually in the first couple feet. It's Normally in about three feet, and what you'd say is the excavation trench around the perimeter of your house. Okay, and so this rebar right here, that can help lessen the likelihood of that. But in this case, with the new base and it being 26 years old, they're never going to have to worry about this sinking. This driveway right here is going to be tied together with a grid of rods, number fours, 
at about two foot on center and then we will also be putting fiber mesh in here as a supplementary secondary reinforcement. Okay, so you're actually going the extra mile and having both types of structural support or reinforcement within the concrete itself. Correct, the first driveway didn't have anything in it. Oh my gosh, another reason why Correct. it failed. Now Chris, you said pitch is very important in pouring a driveway. Obviously you wanna get the water away from the house. In this case, where are you gonna direct the water to? The water will be taken in two spots. One will be going forward and some will be coming down there. And then we also have what's known as a filter strip that's along the back of the wall there that will be able to carry any excess and provide a place for snow storage. Oh yeah, because it is kind of tight in here. And in the winter time, I know I plow a lot of snow and you don't want to be worried about finding a place to put it, that's for sure. The other thing I like is the homeowner said originally they were thinking about putting a curb in here, but then you suggested this green strip along here to help keep the water on site, which is so important. It's kind of on the basis of a recharge strip or a filter strip, take it and put it back in the ground like that. Well, it certainly makes sense to me. And as I look at the lay of the land here, even when it's done, it's gonna be a little, lower than the adjacent driveway. So again, that's a paramount importance. Where are you gonna put that water? Cause the last thing you want is water pooling on site. You want it to stay on site underneath down in the soil, but not on top of the driveway. Now, how long until they're ready to pour? Concrete should be here in a half an hour. So what do you say you and I step back, let them finish the prep work and we can pick it up once they start the pouring Sounds process. good. And we'll do that next. So far in today's show, we've learned how an inadequate base led to the failure of this home's original concrete driveway, and how the new driveway will sit on a solid base and be properly reinforced for maximum longevity. Now let's learn more about the pouring and finishing process as we continue with Chris Foss. Well, Chris, you know, in my opinion, it never gets old seeing a concrete project at this stage. I love it when it's starting to come together. And the thing that stands out to me about your company is you had nine, ten guys here doing this pour. Is it really that important? I need every one of them here to turn out the quality product that you see that we sell. So why is that? I mean, what's the advantage to having this many people? I have a short amount of time with a perishable product that's getting hard as we speak. Really? And so once it's laid down, you have a minimal amount of time to achieve the end result that you're trying to do? Within two hours, you can walk on this. Well, you know, before we get into the finishing process, I picked up some of the mud or the concrete, and the first thing I noticed with this mix is there are some fibers in here. What is that? That is a microfiber, and that is what is known as a secondary reinforcement in this driveway, along with the re-rods. We've added that. Now it has two reinforcements in it. So you're telling me that these microfibers add that much strength to the concrete? They had uh, wonderful impact resistance, shrinkage and crack control, and they gain a little strength by putting it in there. So from a homeowner standpoint, this is probably something that they might not have thought of, but they should talk to their concrete professional about, is the quality of the mix, the additives that they're putting in, and ask for the microfibers and ask for the re-rod. Sure, it starts at the base, you wanna make sure you have a good base, but don't skimp on the mix itself. For a couple dollars at that cost, that's cheap secondary reinforcement. Now, once the concrete arrived on site, the pouring process began, and I'd like to walk through that for our viewers and talk about some of the tools that they use to do it. The ready mix arrives by transit truck. The concrete's placed. It's put down and raked around with a rake. It's screeded down to its flatness or the pitch of plane by some screed boards. It is closed up with a bull float over the top. And then in the end result, we do some joints and some brooming. Those are the things that you see on top. Okay, so let's focus specifically on that pouring process. I noticed that it was always a pretty uniform consistency, maybe four and a half inches, I would say, going across there. How were they able to keep it at that? Sure, they're using a screed to go across, but how do they know at one end of the screed, it's not three inches, and one end of the screed, five inches? We had set some grade stakes in there that they screed off these points 
to keep the pitch and keep it moving down those along the line. Those were those, and those were essentially a re -rod. rebar there. And then I saw them, they whacked them down Pounded in once them down. they're done. Yep. Ah, oh, so that's the trick to keeping that uniformity, nice smooth finish, and getting the water at the end of the day to drain away from the house and Get leave the driveway where you want it. Yeah, exactly. Correct. Okay, what were some of the tools that they were using, um, aside from the landscape rake that they were using, or concrete rake pulling it in there? Oh, there's, there's screeds, there's trowels, there's jointers. These are all specialty items that are used in our trade, specific. And I can't, you know, I can't compliment your guys enough. They, again, make it look so easy, but you can tell that they have years of experience. They don't get in each other's way, yet they're working in pretty close proximity. These nine guys probably have 200 plus years here today. So I have a uh, well-seasoned crew that puts out a beautiful product. Yeah, that's for sure. So you said you had a limited amount of time to work with this concrete. How do they go about starting the finishing process? Those lines right there, Stu, are snapped in. Those create the joints that you see in the driveway. We cut them with a joint. The joiner cuts a, a nosing in at about an inch and a quarter deep to contain the joint. And when you say contain the joint, is that come back to concrete by nature tends to crack and you're trying to control it? We want to put that crack down in the bottom of the joint, not somewhere where you can see it. You know, we always joked in the past on previous shows that concrete, that's the one thing you can guarantee with it is it's going to crack. But a competent professional like yourself, you guys are making sure it's going to crack to the best of your ability where you want it to. The big thing is when you cut your joints, keeping them even. If they're seven footers, they're all seven footers. So seven by seven, no odd sizes, uniformity. And that not only helps with cracking, but with the aesthetic beauty of the end result. And speaking of which, that window pane finish, is this where they start doing that then? Yes. Because as I look over there, I can start to see it, but it's also brushed. Is there those brooms? They broom the interior. You have to have some traction or it would be too slippery. And then that window pane really sets it off almost like a border around each joint. Correct. Well, Chris, this is going to look beautiful when it's done. What's it going to take to finish it up? They'll finish jointing, brooming, getting it all ready, and the last step will be spraying a curing compound on it. What does that curing compound do? The curing compound sprays a film-forming membrane over the top of it, helps keep the moisture in there and maintain its temperature, which also, in the end, gets you good, hard, strong, watertight concrete that's able to survive our uh, freeze-thaw cycling. Sure, we have some pretty harsh winters here in the upper Midwest. And speaking of which, is there any ongoing maintenance that these homeowners should do to help not only maintain the longevity, but the aesthetic beauty of it? A periodic sealing to protect their investment is recommended. With decorative, it's a different sealer. With driveways, it's a penetrating sealer. Okay, well, I know from past shows, you do much more than just driveways. Can we take a little tour and see some of your handiwork? I'd love to show you some nice ones. Stick around, we'll take the concrete tour next. Earlier in today's show, we learned why starting with a good base and incorporating the proper reinforcements will maximize the longevity of a concrete driveway and how experienced professionals can transform ordinary gray concrete into a work of art during the finishing process. Now let's see some more examples as we take the concrete tour with Chris Foss. Stu, we're stopping at this one to start our concrete tour. This driveway was completed in 2004. It's a picture frame finish, an eight inch soldier course border on the outside, and it's done with a hardener color that's gonna enhance the colors off the house. This is remarkable. I mean, to me, I can't get over that it was done over 11 years ago, and it looks this good. 2004, is this pretty typical? A homeowner can expect a driveway to last this long and look this good? Starts with a good base, good foundation, good reinforcement, good steps to build it, and you get a good product that's gonna last you for generations. Great case in point of why, as a homeowner, you wanna do your homework, get an experienced professional that's been in business for a while and knows how to create an end product like this. Now, you used a couple terms, first of which was a pitcher frame finish. Is that the same as a Western finish, we used to call it back in the day? It used to be known as a Western finish. The pitcher frame, itself shines up the joints around the outside creating a border on it. Ah, oh, that's nice. A nice little architectural touch to it. Now this, when we first arrived, I thought that it was soldier course brick, but you're saying this is concrete? This was poured with this driveway. It's a color hardener that was shaken on the top, and then we stamped a brick pattern in it. Did a little variegation in the sealer, did some acid stain highlights, 
And you have a really beautiful finished product oh here. Oh my gosh, beautiful. That's an understatement. I love the old world look that it has. But even more importantly, I love how you looked at the colors of the house, the shingles, the stonework, and you tied it in here so it really accentuates the entranceway. We talked about curb appeal with a driveway. This is a great case in point of how you take a 20 or 30 yard driveway and somebody might say, well, what can you possibly do to enhance it? This right here is what you can do. And if you get the right company to do it, it's gonna last a long time. They're made to last for generations. So is this really just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to enhancing the look of a driveway? The sky's the limit on driveways nowadays. It gets down to how much you wanna spend. Stu, we stopped by here on the tour today. This is an integral colored driveway with a powdered release. It's a Grand Ashler slate, a soldier's course border on it. And it's a color that was picked to complement the house on its two-door style, bring a little bit of the orange and a little bit of the brown to the release in it. We also overlaid a regular gray stoop up there that was structurally sound and made it the same color and the same texture so everything flows right to the front door. This is beautiful and the thing that I like best you touched on, it's a Tudor house. This is an example of how you can take a driveway and complement your house. We talk about curb appeal, you get one chance to make a first impression. This is beautiful and I love the Grand Ashler slate that they selected. The soldier course picks up nicely with the brick around the front door. And let me get this straight, the front stoop was an existing just gray concrete. Regular gray broom concrete. And you were able to overlay it and they're gonna get longevity. They're not gonna have to worry about that flaking off. It takes a little maintenance. You need to keep it sealed like that. Sure, but what a great opportunity for any viewer out there when they look out at their front stoop and it's just gray concrete. Here's an option for you to enhance your front as entryway. As long as that concrete is structurally sound, you have an option to put an overlay over the top of Wonderful. it. Wonderful. And you know, we visit a lot of different projects with you. And to me, what I'm noticing is within a neighborhood, it's not just one driveway. Oftentimes you're doing two, three, four down the road. This one sold the neighbors over here, which is a picture frame. It has a colored and stamped front walk. And also we overlaid the front stoop cap with the same color and texture of the walk. On our last stop today, I'm gonna to show you a custom patio and walkway here that we did. Wow, this is beautiful back here. Now what was here before you came and did all the color stamp concrete? A combination of concrete, brick and concrete with no base underneath it, completely failed with a big drainage issue. Drainage issue, so the homeowners were able to solve that problem by having you come in and create this? Correct. This area here is virtually its own patio with an awning over the top of it and that, and the rest of it is a walkway that is transferred to to the side, to his garage, to his other deck, and then he's got a small grilling area off to the side. Well, a couple of things that stand out to me is, first of all, you created separate rooms in this outdoor living space, outdoor entertainment area, and you did it by using borders and different colors, and as I get closer, different textures. What type of textures were you using here? This is an orchard stone right here. This is an Oxford slate. This is a heavy stone texture using three different patterns in here. Borders are acid stained and the rocks are highlighted with acid stain in here. And you know, it really ties in all the natural materials that they used in their landscape design. Pull it all together and I gotta believe they're using this space more than they even imagined. Being out here with the blinds coming over, blocking the sun, I bet on a nice warm day like this you could sit out here and enjoy some family time. That's what its intention is for, to uh, have a nice area that's virtually maintenance free. And you know, it was a pretty small area and I hope this opens the eyes to our viewers that you don't need a huge area to take advantage of concrete technology in the form of color stamping like this. You can really create some nice living space. Everything that's here was here, from the ponds, to the beds, to the rock there. So we rebuilt this within the existing Every six to eight years, you're gonna to wanna to put a new coat of sealer on this and keep it enhanced and it makes it shine. Sure, and in all the examples we've seen today, you create curb appeal, you can create outdoor living space. And I really, Chris, hope it opened the eyes to our viewers and I appreciate you taking the time out and showing them to us. Thanks for the opportunity. Now here are some key points to help summarize today's show. Concrete driveways, walkways, and patios can add beauty, elegance, and curb appeal to a home. 
and when properly installed, can be virtually maintenance-free and last for generations. And with advancements in the concrete industry, design possibilities are now virtually endless. So be sure to consider all of your options and hire an experienced contractor with the knowledge, tools, and manpower to create your own long-lasting masterpiece. Well, we're all out of time for this week's show. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again next time on today's Home Remodeler. The preceding program was sponsored by the Today's Home Remodeler Television Network.